It's hard to say what is the bigger challenge, coming up with a coronavirus vaccine or getting it to people. Marketplace Morning Report is supported by Progressive Insurance, committed to offering a streamlined shopping experience where home and auto can be bundled together. Now that's Progressive. Learn more at Progressive.com or 1-800-PROGRESSIVE. I'm David Brancaccio. First, J.P. Morgan Chase is investigating whether some of its employees and customers misused or gamed the federal pandemic loans in the spring. Marketplace's Nancy Marshall Genzer joins us here with details. What's the biggest of banks looking into here? Oh, J.P. Morgan Chase sent a memo to employees. It says the company is looking into the role some of its workers may have played in the misuse of Paycheck Protection Program or PPP loans, also unemployment benefits and other money from government programs. The bank says that behavior doesn't live up to its principles and may even be illegal. What can be done to prevent this kind of stuff? J.P. Morgan Chase says it's cooperating with law enforcement, quote, where appropriate. Georgetown law professor Emma Coleman Jordan has another idea. She told me banks should be required to keep some percentage of these loans on their books. It's called skin in the game. That means that if they don't scrutinize the loans properly and the loans default, they are going to lose money, too. Uh, Coleman Jordan says that would also cut down on the misuse of government money the J.P. Morgan Chase memo was talking about because banks would be on the lookout for fraud. She told me right now banks are paid 5% of the value of the loan no matter what, even if there is fraud. All right. Marketplace's Nancy Marshall Ginzer, thank you. There's also word from the IRS that as many as 9 million people still need to claim their $1,200 stimulus checks. This is mostly people who typically don't file tax returns. You have until the middle of next month, October, to register for the money. After three days of plummeting technology stocks, index futures at the moment suggest some stabilization today. The NASDAQ future is up 1.6%. The S&P future is up 7 tenths percent. Marketplace Morning Report is supported by Fidelity Wealth Management, where advisors work with their clients to develop flexible investment strategies that evolve as their needs change. Fidelity.com slash wealth. Fidelity Brokerage Services, LLC. And by Avalara, simplifying sales tax compliance with cloud-based solutions. Avalara automatically integrates with more than 700 of the most widely used ERP and e-commerce solutions. Avalara, tax compliance done right. AstraZeneca stock, the pharmaceutical company, is down 1% in London now after the news that it has paused giving shots of its corona vaccine candidate to test volunteers because one patient had an unexplained complication. Scientists say this is common in a drug trial to give researchers time to understand what happened. Shares of companies making other vaccines are up today. Moderna up 2.2 percent in pre-market trading. BioNTech stock is up 5 percent in Germany. And making a vaccine is only part of the challenge. Also hard giving it out. Some say the biggest logistical undertaking in human history. Here on the Marketplace Morning Report, we're covering this distribution challenge with regular coverage starting today. I spoke to Nancy Cass, a professor of bioethics and public health at Johns Hopkins and deputy director for public health in the Berman Institute of Bioethics there. There's a term we need, two words, vaccine nationalism. So vaccine nationalism is a phrase that has come up in the context of COVID to mean that a particular country might want to make sure that all of its own people get vaccinated before the vaccine is shared with others. Essentially, it's a way of saying, um, if it's our vaccine, we want all of our people to have it first before anybody else in the world can have it. And I can see as a matter of politics that you might want to you know, America first in the case of the United States of America. But there's an ethical problem with that. Absolutely. And 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 I want to say that I think it goes beyond politics. I think you're absolutely right that there is a political angle here. But there is also our leaders are trying their best to serve their own constituents. And if their constituents are clamoring to be able to get the vaccine, they're unemployed, they haven't been able to send their kids to school. It's understandable that they will want to be vaccinated. The challenge here is that this is an infectious disease. And so even if we weren't concerned about equity for its own sake, 
it becomes an, an impractical strategy to say that everybody in the United States deserves to be vaccinated before the vaccine can be shared with anyone else. So in the event that these officials can figure out the equitable way to get enough coronavirus vaccine to India, to Brazil, to Argentina and beyond, in the U.S. we have to figure out who might get the vaccine earlier and who might get it later. So so both the people who are directly caring for people or directly involved in the COVID response and the people who are essential workers might be called instrumental having instrumental value. It means that vaccinating them not only protects them because they are at greater risk because they have so much contact with so many people as a function of their jobs, but they also have the potential to expose so many people. Another group who become very important and in my mind then become the second group um, are people who themselves, because of their pre-existing health conditions, really at high risk for the most severe complications of COVID. Generally people who are in the later years of their lives, Um, It is often people with um, multiple other health conditions. um, And some of that tracks with racial and ethnic minorities, which just adds another layer to this. So while it is not true that all older people or all minority people are at highest risk, it is becoming clear that people who f- who can check several boxes at once are clearly statistically and epidemiologically at highest risk for hospitalization from COVID and at highest risk for never leaving the hospital. Nancy Cass is a professor of bioethics and public health at Johns Hopkins and deputy director for public health at the Berman Institute of Bioethics. Thank you so much. A pleasure. Nice to talk to you, David. I also talked to Dr. Cass about the 20 percent of people in the U.S. who say they don't plan to get a COVID shot, Marketplace.org, or our podcast, if you miss it later this week on the air. We're calling our coverage Fast Track, the grand challenge of vaccinating the world against COVID-19. I'm David Brancaccio. This is the Marketplace Morning Report. From APM, American Public Media.